Hey there, this is Dan, and in this video, I wanna talk about immutability in Python. So in this video, I wanna show you what immutability means, what does it mean when an object is immutable or we refer to an object as immutable, and then I wanna talk about the specifics of immutability in Python, because there are actually some aspects of it that are not that intuitive, especially if you're coming from a different language background, and um, I want to cover those so that you know what's going on and you know how to handle these situations when you encounter them in practice. All right, so let's get started. So to demonstrate what immutable or immutability means, I'm going to create a mutable object and then an immutable object, and then I'm going to show you the difference. So for a mutable object, which means an object that can be freely modified, um, an example would be to create a simple list. So I'm gonna create a list and I'm gonna put some values into it or actually let's go with uh, A, B and C. And with a mutable object, I can freely modify this object. So I can go in here and I can say, let's change, let's change the value at index one. And when we look at mutable object, you can see here that this mutation was applied. So we modified the contents of this object. Now, with an immutable object, we can't do that. An example for an immutable object would be a tuple here. So I'm gonna create a tuple with the same contents. And now when we try to apply the same modification, we're getting a type error. Tuple object does not support item assignment. And that's really the key difference. So a mutable object can be freely modified and an immu immutable object can't. Now, what are some examples for mutable objects? So a typical mutable object would be a list like we had before, could also be um, a dictionary. So we can change those after the fact, or it could also be a set. Those are all mutable. And if you have a custom class that's also mutable by default, we can just go in and change attributes on the class. Now, what are some examples for objects that are immutable that can't be freely modified in Python? One typical example would be a string. So the string one, two, three, we can't actually reach in and modify um, characters in that string. So it's immutable. Uh, another example would be the tuple that I just showed you. Or another example could be a frozen set. So I'm gonna create a frozen set here. And a frozen set, well, it's frozen, so we can't freely modify it. So those would be examples of immutable objects or immutable values in Python. Now, this seems pretty straightforward, right? If you have a mutable object, you can reach into the object, freely modify it. And with an immutable object, you can't. That seems to be a pretty clear definition. So I wanna go a little bit deeper into some of the oddities that you might encounter when it comes to immutable objects in Python. But before I do that, let's talk about when you wanna use mutable and when you wanna use immutable objects and what they're good for. So the great thing about an immutable object is that it is sealed. It can't really be modified once it's been created. And that can be a really helpful property if you wanna write code that's easier to debug. So essentially when you create an immutable object, you will know what its value is going to be and that its value is going to be constant after it was created. So when you're debugging code that works with immutable objects, it's much more easy to find out what the current state of an object is. And uh, immutability is also helpful when you're working with parallelism in your programs, because then you can pretty much guarantee that there won't be another thread reaching into your data and modifying it when you don't expect it. Now, it's extremely hard to write all of your code in a way that makes it completely immutable, at least in Python, and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. But the general idea of when you want to apply immutability or want to use immutable objects is when you, when you want to seal objects, you want to guarantee that their value and their contents are not going to change. Now, with mutable objects, you would always use them if you need to modify an object or a container as you go along, right? Let's, let's say you, you wrote an algorithm that um, collects uh, a bunch of names in a list, then you would obviously have to keep adding these names to the list. I mean, you could implement that algorithm in a way where instead of modifying the list by adding an element, it would actually create a completely new list from scratch and just override the 
the list object, um, which could be a, a good thing from a debuggability perspective, but um, generally that will be a slower approach than updating the list in place. So that's another trade-off you need to look out for, right? Immutable objects are, I guess you could say safer and easier to debug, but the downside is it will always be faster to just reach in and modify an object in place. So there can be some performance trade-offs that you need to make. So that's just a quick overview of mutability versus immutability. And actually what I want to do now is I want to talk about some of the quirks when it comes to immutability in Python. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a tuple, which is immutable, and I'm going to put a list into it, which is mutable. And we're going to encounter a pretty interesting situation here, or well, I guess almost a paradox, depending on what definition of, of mutable and uh, immutable you use. So I'm going to place some values into this tuple. And at index one, I am going to add a list. Okay, so now we looked at this tuple, we've got the tuple here, it starts with the value one. And then we've got this list which sits at index one and then we've got a string here at uh, index two in the tuple now if i try and modify this tuple and i go let's say i want to try and modify the first value we can't do it right because the tuple is immutable the same thing is true when i try to let's say um, change this string here word uh, change it and make it uppercase. So if I wanted to do that, that doesn't work because strings are immutable too, right? Now, you can already see here, the type error didn't say, hey, you can't do that because the tuple is immutable or does not support item assignment. It said the stir object does not support item assignment. So can you guess what's going to happen when I try to modify the list at index one? So let's say we're going to do the same thing and I'm going to modify this list. And so the surprising result here is that this actually worked. We modified the tuple or it depends on your definition, right? Python says we didn't modify the tuple. All the tuple cares about is, well, it points to some values and one of them is a list and you can't change what list this tuple is pointing to. But because a list is mutable, you can very well reach in and modify the list. So in a way, Python's definition of mutability and immutability is non-transitive. So it means if the tuple is immutable, that doesn't guarantee that an object referenced by the tuple is also immutable or that all objects referenced by the tuple are also immutable. So the mutability, it kind of stops after the first level, right? That guarantee stops after the first level. So we can't modify the tuple itself, but we can reach in and modify objects that the tuple holds. This can be a little bit confusing when you see it the first time or when you just hear the word immutable and I've you know I've seen this over and over again working with people and also people commenting on my blog posts and tutorials it is just a point of confusion for new python programmers so I, that's why I decided to do this video so what you can see here is we were able to modify this object even though it is immutable this all comes down to python's definition of immutability and the fact that immutability in python is not transitive right it stops after the first level, there's no guarantees that further down in the object hierarchy, there isn't a mutable object. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's what I meant earlier, that sometimes in Python can be a little bit hard to actually write code and use data structures that are always immutable. You, you really have to be careful not to introduce something like this, where you have an immutable data structure that then contains a mutable data structure and that means it can be freely modified and there's no immutability guarantee because immutability is non-transitive all right so not everyone is going to encounter this and um, i don't want to discourage you with this video and confuse you but if you do encounter it then you, you're going to see you know why it happens you're going to understand why this happens so this is just something to be aware of when it comes to immutability and mutability in Python. All right, so I hope this video helped you out. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see some more Python tutorials just like that one, then subscribe to my channel. The button is in the lower right in this video. Talk soon and happy Pythoning.